This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Let's say there's a single lane road where no passing is allowed, and a tree has fallen causing a line of cars to pile up. After the tree is cleared and all cars are free to move, the question is, given some total number of cars n, how many groups or bunches of cars are expected to form after everyone gets up to their own preferred speed? What I mean by this is that every car has a certain speed they'd like to move on the road, which I'll write above the car. We can say these are the speeds everyone would travel if no one else was on the road, and we'll also assume none of them are the same. So as we know, some people are fast drivers, some go around the speed limit, while others go much slower than it, aka are annoying. And note, I'm not putting units here, so just use whatever you want. Now, if this first car is the slowest, then we'll have one single group. Every car will just be bunched behind that slowest one, wanting to go faster. If the second slowest car is in front, and the slowest car is somewhere in the middle, then you'll have two groups. And if by chance the cars are ordered by fastest driver to slowest, then everyone will be happy moving at their own speed, not tailing the next driver, and there will be, in this case, four groups for the four cars. Yes, a single car still counts as a group, by the way. So we want more groups because that means more people will be happy. But we only care about the expected number of groups, which, yes, does come out to the harmonic series. So let's see how this happens. First, imagine there are only two cars, one faster than the other, of course. Well, here we've got two scenarios. Either the faster person is in front, and we have two groups, or the faster one is in the back, giving us one group. If we average these, we find the expected number of groups or bunches when there are only two cars is 1.5 or 1 plus a half. If instead we have three cars in total of their own desired speeds, then there are six total permutations. In the ideal case, there are three groups. If the slowest car is in front, regardless of the other two, we will guaranteed have one group. And then in all other scenarios here, we'll have two groups. The average of these numbers is 1.83 repeating, or 1 plus a half plus a third. Now, with four cars, there are 24 permutations, which is too many to show on the screen. But if I did find the number of bunches for all of those permutations and average them, we'd get 2.083 repeating, which is, yes, the first four numbers of the harmonic series. So why does this happen? Well, with several cars, you can determine exactly how many groups will form, but just going down the line and keeping track of how many cars are the slowest so far. Because any car that's the slowest of all the cars in front of it causes a new group. As in, when we start, this car is automatically the slowest so far. Yes, it's the fastest as well, but still the slowest, so we have guaranteed one group. Now the next car is faster, so it doesn't start a new group, it'll just be tailing the car in front. And same goes for the next one, which is also going to be stuck going 56 whatever units. But this fourth car is now the slowest one so far. All others in front of it are faster, which means we now have a second group that will form, which will move slower than the first. And that bunch will last until we find another car that is slower than all others in front of it. In this case, it would be the one labeled 54, and that would cause a third group to form. So the new question is, how many, quote, slowest so far cars do we expect given a total number of cars n? Because that's how many groups we expect to form. Well, going back, the first car is a 100% chance of being the slowest so far. That's easy. So the expected number of groups is 1 if we stop there. Then there are two options for the next car. It's either faster or slower than the first. So assuming all things random, that means there's a 50% chance of it being the slowest so far, which means we add one half to the overall expected number of groups. 50% of the time it adds one, and 50% of the time it adds zero. The next car will be the slowest of these first three, one third of the time, increasing the expected number of groups by this amount. And if we continue this pattern, then add the results, we get the harmonic series, telling us how many groups are expected to form for a set of n cars. This means if you've got 10 cars, let's say, you just add up all these numbers until you get to 1 tenth, telling us there will be 2.93 groups on average. If we have 100 cars and have to sum all the way to 1 one hundredth, we get 5.19 groups on average. 1,000 cars yield 7.49. 
and at 10,000 cars we don't even get to 10 groups on average. It's slow, however the series does diverge. If there were a million, billion, trillion cars and so on, the number of groups would increase forever, but at an extremely slow rate as you can see. So kind of relating this to the real world, if there was some long one lane bridge with constant traffic, since the velocity of each group by default decreases as you move back, then at any moment the velocity of cars getting onto the bridge will likely be slower than those leaving it. Or another way to put it, if you looked at cars going into and out of a one lane tunnel where there is traffic unlike this footage, you'd probably find at any given time that cars exiting the tunnel have a faster velocity than those entering. Not too many further applications I can see, but thought that was an interesting example of the harmonic series showing up in the real world. And in fact, there are several other examples I may do a separate video on. But if you did find this stuff interesting, then you can continue your learning right now over at Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. One course that very much relates to what we saw here is Physics of the Everyday, as one of the many things it goes through is the math and physics behind traffic, including flow rates, traffic waves, propagation speeds of single lane traffic, and more. But I found this course interesting because it goes through other applications that don't really get attention in school, like how an understanding of tangent lines can help you determine which way a bike was moving just from its tire tracks. Or there's the analysis of blood splatters, where you'll learn how you can get an accurate picture of what happened during a crime by the bloodstain patterns along with some math and fluid mechanics. But on top of this, the course covers renewable energy, weather, structural analysis, and more, so you'll get exposed to a wide range of unique applications. But if that's not for you, Brilliant has dozens of other courses in math, science, and engineering to choose from. So, if you want to get started learning right now and support the channel, you can do so by clicking the link below or going to brilliant.org slash zackstar. And the first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. And with that, I'm going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon, social media links are down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.